beer, watch the game. And uh, he's, he's walking back to the rectory, and a uh, guy came up behind him and held him up. So give me your money. So Father turned around to the guy, and the guy saw that the Father had a and he had his collar on. He goes, oh, I'm sorry, Father, you know, I, I can't rob you. And the priest is going, Whoosh, you know. So he goes to Robert, would you like a beer? And he goes, no, I gave it up for Lent. <laughs> where we've been in Lent through all the weeks of Lent. And I just want to share that with you. We started out by looking at the 40 days, the 40 days of biblical number of uh, significance, the 40 days in the desert with Moses and Noah, the 40 days, the 40 day fast, 40 days of Jesus in his fast before his public ministry, 40 days of Jesus appearing to his disciples of the resurrected Christ after he had risen from the dead. And uh, I've given you that image that I hope we can carry with us through our lives of the sign language of the dying and rising. So the dying and the rising and rising to new life. And that's what it's all about. We've got to die to certain things. Die to all that that's death and rise in the life that Christ is constantly giving us. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are always about life. Always about life for us. And we want to continue to enter the business of business. Who is God? God who was and is and is to come, to experience that. As Moses asked what God's name was, and God says, tell the people, I am. I am who was, I am who with you right now, and I am who will be forever. That incredible life, the sharing of the Trinity. And then the second week, we had the transfiguration story as we celebrated that as a church. And we talked about the disciples, Peter, James, and John. They were sleeping. They weren't awake. And then through the power of that encounter, the glory of God, they became awake. They came awake to things. And so often we can be so sleepy and not even aware. But we believe, and we talked about, that this transfiguration, this power, it's available. And it's offered. But we must ask for it. We must seek it. We can't program it but we know that it will change everything. It will change our lives once we see the glory of God and how the glory of God operates. I shared with you about how my father died and my experience of him leaving his body and going to heaven. heaven. And the glory of God, that transfiguration. And God saying, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of what I have for you. The life that I have for you. Wake up. Give me time. Look at me. I will show you. It's available. It's offered. It must be sought after. It must be gone after. But it will be given to us who seek it. In the third week, we celebrated the Jesus cleansing of the temple. We talked about the temple. There were three basic temples in Jewish history of our Jewish brothers and sisters. 900 B.C., that of Solomon. And then about in 515 B.C., that being repaired and restored. And then King Herod, 20 B.C., as King Herod expanded it, and it was finally completed in 63 A.D., and then ransacked by the Romans in 70 A.D., never to be a uh, temple to be used again. And we talked about Jesus in the temple, and Jesus says, this temple I'm going to replace with my body. I'm going to replace this temple with my body, and my blood. And I will feed you that in the Eucharist. And we talked about three adjectives describing Jesus in that. We talked about his anger. He said, this is not right. What is going on here is not right. And I want you to know and live in my life. And that we should have that same zeal for what is right. That we would stand up for that. And then we hear about the zeal of Jesus. Taking everything down. He's going through the temple. He's taking everything down. Going through the temple of your heart and throwing it all down and coming to you. And I said, I'm here for you. I'm here to give you my life. I'm front and center. And that's my zeal for you. And that consumes me. I love you. I want to give you the life of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then we talked about authority. The authority of Jesus. You have invincible, immense, infinite, infinite authority with you in the name of Jesus. They can answer prayers. They can put an end to 
addictions. He can put an end to evil. It's in us. We have that authority. So many times we act like wimps. We act like, oh, I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe not. And we can claim that authority. And then last week we looked at John 3.16, God's love for the soul, and how we can choose darkness over light. Deacon Mike talked about how we can draw into that light, respond to that light, and that it's not love. It's a gift. And it's with us. And ask for a response. And this weekend I'd simply like to kind of bring it all together, what we've been talking about, this whole idea of dying and rising. Dying and rising. And the whole idea, which I talked about on Ash Wednesday, that there's a point to it. There's a point to all this. We're not pointless people. We're pointful people. We're full of point of who God is for us. And He gives us that meaning. And the point is, and the point in our scriptures today is, we have to learn how to die. Like a grain of wheat that falls. We've got to learn how to die. And how will we do that? I have a friend who wasn't getting the point for five years. He just couldn't forget. He'd been hurt for five years. He wasn't getting the point. He wasn't dying and rising. We can think about in the early early church, the Romans, the Roman people, they weren't getting the point. Back to those two examples in a moment. So, as I've shared with you before, in this dying and rising, a big death that we have to die to is our ego. Our own ego. Edging God out. Ego. Edging God out. I'll make the plans, I'll call the shots, I'll make the day, I'll make the way, our own ego, and we never listen to Him who's come to save us. And so, in contradistinction to that ego and that idea, we read in the scriptures that unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains but a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it bears and yields much fruit. Whoever loves his life in this world will lose it, but whoever hates his life will find it. And what is that? Why is such the strong word hate? Because hate is a strong word. Because the Oriental people use that as a way of communicating a message in stark contrast. You've got to hate your life. Not that you hate life that's God given you, but to hate anything that is not of God. That whole idea of the cleansing of the temple, the cleansing of the temple of our hearts. And if we die, and we learn to die to certain things, then we get to our first reading where God says, I will write your law on my heart. I will write my law on your heart. And that's what I will do for you. No longer will you need friends or relatives to teach you about my law, because I'll write it on your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. In our reconciliation service this morning, I shared with those who were here about, you know, uh, I don't need you to tell you what your sins are. You need to. You need to know that. You need to know that. I don't need to teach you that. You need to know that, and you need to know what God will do for you, and that is you confess your sins. That God will write all of this life on our heart. And He will teach us how to die, what to die to, to take away everything that takes us away from Him so that we can live. Back to a couple of examples of dying and rising. My friend, who could not, he was hurt by somebody, could not forgive for five years. And then turned to God, worked it in his heart to forgive. So he died to the unforgiveness and he rose in the forgiveness of Christ. Brothers and sisters, that hits about a majority of our spiritual problems that we have in our lives. That of unforgiveness. To die to that unforgiveness and live in that forgiveness of Christ. Unforgiveness is not even a possibility in the realm of Jesus. You cannot not forgive. That's what Jesus is all about. And then let's take the example of the Romans, the early Romans. You know what they used to do? Indulge, indulge, indulge. 
They would eat their feast, eat their food, they would go and gain themselves, and they would regurgitate all that food so that they come back and eat more food. Their God, and this is probably why Paul said their God was their belly, because they thought that that's what God was, pleasure. And they had to die to that and to rise to say, no, it's not about the physical, owning and operating everything. It's about the spiritual, God's life, the life of Christ coming into my life, which will meet, uh, meet my needs for fulfillment. As we die and rise, then we'll find the life of Jesus. And the life of Jesus is, I'm all in. I'm always. I'm for you. All in, always for you. And we will find ourselves with that kind of life. That is 